Asin North MP George Atikwesin has cited the petitioner in his case for contempt. He says Michael and Kuman in fact lied before the Court of Appeal when he deposed to an affidavit that the issue of the interpretation of Article 942A did not arise at the trial court in Cape Coast. Lawyer for the MP Chachuchikata wants the court to commit him to contempt because the issue of Article 942A did arise at the High Court. Joining me for more is our Central Regional Correspondent Richard Kwejonyaku. Richard, how is all this coming up uh, from the uh, Jachukwesin's camp? All right, so we just dropped, uh, we lost Richard Kwejonyaku. He's our Central Regional Correspondent. We'll be getting him back to tell us more. Right now, let's go to Parliament because MP for Medina, Francis Sevi Sozu, says he will file an urgent question in Parliament on why the gender ministry is silent when many women are being abused and accused of practicing witchcraft. A video showing a priest torturing two Ghanaian women at his camp has sparked anger among local authorities in the northeast region. The two women from Sakogo in the East Mamprusi municipality were accused of being witches and forced to the camp to participate in a ritual test that will confirm or deny the allegations against them. The disturbing footage intercepted by Joy News showed the priest strangling the two women with a broom before dragging their bodies on the floor to force them to confess. But the gender ministry has been silent. Before we bring you views from MP Francis Soso, let's watch the story. With a pastor who held a so called deliverance service last week in the community and in the process accused two women of being witches. These women refuted the allegation, but as the norm in the community, they are demanded to face a witch doctor or spiritual priest for a ritual test to prove or otherwise the accusation. To do this, the women were taken several miles away to the camp of a notorious priest in neighboring Togo instead of the Gambaga Runners Palace. This disturbing video you are about to see, intercepted by Joy News, showed the moment the two women arrived at the camp. In this camp, unlike in Gambaga, where only a foul is needed to determine the innocence or guilty of an accused person, the process is done differently, mostly through physical torture by the priest. Here, if a victim pleads guilty, she is immediately handed back to her accusers. On the other hand, if she pleads innocence, the priest must exact a confession from them by any means possible. In this case, both women maintain their innocence and so must participate in the ritual test. The first woman is made to face the shrine while on her knees. The priest appears from her back with two brooms which he binds together across her neck and presses firmly and hard until she is almost unconscious and forced to confess. The woman is released immediately after the confession is exacted. The second accused appears and the process is repeated on her. Samson Lar is a local expert in witchcraft. He's the current coordinator of the Gambaga Witches Camp. Hear his analysis of the video. And in the process to confirm whether the woman is really a witch or not is what you just saw. They use a broom, they talk to their ghosts. And they use the broom on you. If you are able to come out of it, it means you are not. But if the broom handles you, you could see in the video what they are doing to the women. Some almost even died. And that is when they will now ask you to say the truth and be free. Is that what we want? I ask myself a lot of questions. The executive director of the uh, Sane Institute of Professor John Azuma says the state has failed to support vulnerable women accused of practicing witchcraft. He wants the state to be responsive to the plight of women which have been tortured. 
politicians and like with any society, when the thing is out of view, it's out of mind. So out of sight, out of mind. So we need to keep this up. And I am so grateful that you are doing this. Yeah. But to follow up on what uh, Honorable said, I think that this, there are enough uh, uh, provisions for people to be charged. But if you rely on the victims to go and report, look at this poor woman. She will not go to the police. She cannot go to the police. The community will prevail on her. They will put pressure on her not to report this issue. The state must take these things up. Yeah. This is something that the state should step up. And when people, these cases are reported, they are never prosecuted to the end. They have put pressure on them to drop the cases. And all interference, even sometimes interference from lawmakers, who will ask these victims to drop these cases? Yeah. So I think everybody needs to be up, and the media have to keep the spotlight on this, interview the right people. I am glad you've got honorable here. Mm. Call the MP of the area where this is happening. Yeah. Interview them. Put them on the spot. Hold their feet to the fire. This is how we have to go with the advocacy and the pressure. Meanwhile, uh, MP for Medina is supposed to be filing an urgent question in Parliament to ask why the uh, Gender Ministry has been quiet over all of this. The Ministry has been, I mean, um, 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 loudly silent in this area, and, and for me, it calls for a lot of concern.